welcome to West Country Wanderings and welcome to another Cots of Walk, Cots of Walk number four. This time we're off to be following the River Colne and the River Colne rises further on up in the Cotswolds. In fact, it rises not that far from the Chedworth Roman Villa and flows just a little trickle of a stream underneath a place called Fossbridge, which is of course on the Foss Way, the road goes, I mentioned it before, Bath, right up to Warwick, and that cuts through the Roman city of, uh, sorry, town of Sirencester, and on up towards Warwick. And in a way, it works its way down through some lovely little villages, for example, Colne Rogers. But we're not in Colne Rogers today, we're a little bit further south of that, we're in fact, we're at the village of Colne St Albans. I've just taken a couple of uh, photographs around the delightful village here. And we're going to do a circular walk following the River Colne today to a place called Bybury. Now Bybury is extremely popular, particularly with uh, YouTubers, so I'm going to try and avoid the really popular bits like uh, Arlington Mill and Arlington Row and all of that. If you want to see all that, just check out, uh, put Bybury into YouTube. For hundreds if not thousands of videos have come up but that's not the purpose of today's walk around Bybury. I will do some snippets just to show that we're there uh, but the main focus is the uh, following the delightful river Colne so why not join me on another Cotswold tour following the river. We are going to be using the Cotswold OS map. I'm using the app on my phone as well obviously that gives you GPS location of where you are and we're also using Colin Handy's book as well for the route and I'll drop some more information in subtitles as we continue our walk today. There won't be quite so much talking from me today, there will be some um, and I'll be discovering together I haven't done this walk before either and uh, if I come across any little uh, snippets I'll include that but I'll try to include some ambient sounds, hopefully it's quite quiet so we can do that for stream and nature as well. So we'll see what we see on the walk here today. So I've just left the village of Conson Aldwins. The track comes down to the village past the church. I'll just include some photographs I've just taken of the church. Beautiful church. I haven't got time to, to go into the church. And also I did a church the other day on my uh, monthly vlog. If you haven't checked that out, it's worth a look. I was up in uh, Warwickshire, beautiful Saxon church there. Anyway, I digress. We're here in the Cotswolds. Walking down this path, we should be coming to a mill near the River Colne. And then I'm going to go up on a wider route. So the, the footpath up to uh, Bybury, or down to Bybury, should I say, is a bit further away from the river. But when we are on the circular walk back to complete the circuit, back to Colne St Albans, we are much closer to it. And in fact, it runs, the path runs parallel to the river for much of its uh, route. Now, about halfway along the route between here and Bybury, the footpath also crosses over the Roman road of Aikman Street. Yes, I've already mentioned one Roman road and that currently is still in use. It's the A429 uh, that goes up to say from Sirencester to Warwick. But there isn't actually used as a road or track, but it is marked on the map. So that's our first glimpse of the River Colne here. It's always been known as a fast flowing river. now coming into well into to spring as you can see from the daffodils and the beautiful weather around me beautiful day here today we're about 19 degrees but yeah it's always been fast flowing i will be doing another walk along the river Colne at a place called fairford and i do apologize if you hear aircraft noise today because uh, close to here in fact we're not that far from fairford as well is RAF fairford and uh, the it's a main military base for the uh, usaf American Air Force uh, and so there's a lot of activity around there so like I say I apologize for um, aircraft noise around there. The reason I haven't done fair for today is because we'll be walking along an estate and that estate following the River Colne in Fairford is only open I believe on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and that's today Saturday is currently closed. 
It is quite busy here today. I say busy, you're probably thinking, well, where is everyone? But there's been lots of walkers around me and I've had to stop doing pieces to camera and restarting it because there is a lot of people. Obviously, it's a weekend. We're now in spring. The clock's changed tonight, in fact, we get it. We lose an hour, spring forward, we lose an hour. But we'll gain an hour's evening, which is great. It's brilliant for me as content creator on YouTube. That extra hour's daylight makes all the difference sometimes. Um, but yeah, so there's people obviously travelled here for the weekend. Uh, so there's obviously second home properties in this area in the Cotswolds, you're probably aware as well. So there are more people around than what I normally would uh, see on one of my walks. But uh, and obviously as we get to Bybury, I'm sure that will increase as well. But uh, anyway, just sit back and enjoy the, uh, the walk and the views here by the River Colm. So the River Colne splits at this point. As you notice, it's uh, less dramatic and less wide than when we saw at the mill. In fact, the, the river splits, presumably to feed the mill that's at the, the lower part of uh, St Colne, St Alwyn's there. And I've just noticed that this part of the walk picks up another trail. Again, another one I've not heard of. And it's called the Palladian Way. An architectural walk. I'm intrigued by that. So uh, what I'll do, the usual thing, when I'm editing the video, go on to Bing, Google, choose your uh, search engine of choice and see what that is and I'll drop that in as a subtitle below. But uh, yeah, so I don't know if it uh, links up some kind of architectural styles throughout this part of the Cotswolds. Sounds uh, really interesting to me, Palladian style. Of course we come across a Palladian style property, didn't we, when we are Doing the vlog the other day at Warwickshire, I won't say where it is in case you haven't seen that vlog. Um, but uh, yeah, there was a Palladian style hall there in the village, built in the 17th century. Um, so I don't know if there's any really large stately homes around this part of the Cotswolds. Um, there's certainly some grand houses, some grand Cotswold houses, and of course it was the wool trade that made this part of the Cotswolds really wealthy. Well, in fact, all the Cotswolds. And you had the wall churches, another really big church at Northleach, which I'm sure we'll explore on a future West Country Wanderings video. Such a joy to see these wonderful celadines. There were celadines behind me. Looks absolutely magnificent. So yeah, we've got a wooded section here. I didn't realise. I looked quickly looked at the map today. I didn't realise there was uh, much wood on this walk. But uh, got these fantastic uh, beech trees. And there's a, a copse over there with some younger trees. I think there's some ash and birch in there as well. So uh, delight. Obviously, we've got some debris here branches that have fallen down probably um, still remnants of those storms we had uh, about three or four weeks ago now we had uh, th three storms didn't we um, and uh, yeah so you, you do see that and obviously they, they used to clear that wood away but now of course if it's not like a managed forestry it's left on the ground for ec ecological reasons because it's brilliant for burrowing insects 
because those help the uh, food for the uh, birds to get those to to come out and there's another woodland down here as well so this is we've gone from the Cotswold village to the mill and the, the river Colm where it splits up until a bit higher up here as I say on the walk back we'll be following the the river in the River Colm Valley there so you'll get to see more of the river again but uh, here we're, we're high above it now of course it's hidden by that bank there just behind me there's a bank of trees there as well as well as the cops behind me so the River Colm is just the other side of that but yeah it's really enjoying this walk this is a uh, quieter section now now I've come away from the the village I think I, I haven't been into Bybury for many many years I've been there many times before I remember going there as a child to visit the uh, the trout farm of course I'm sure if you've been to the Cotswold you've probably been there and done the old uh, get a bag of food and go around f feeding the um, the trout. Oh, it strikes me strange that because you have to pay admission and you have to buy <laughs> buy the food to feed the fish to fish up their fatten up their uh, trout stock so it's a that sounds a pretty good business model to me <laughs> so you get people to to feed your own fish I think that's great but uh, because of the tourist numbers you get in Bybury that uh, often happens but yeah I think parking because it's become really really popular by very perhaps through yes I dare say YouTube and Instagram um, the, it, I think parking there's a real issue and I think what people are now cottoning onto that and parking in the the neighboring villages like Haunts and Albans and Quinnington and uh, walking across to to Bybury. anyway it, I'm just enjoying this here we've got a wonderful example of a Cotswold stone walk a stone wall just running alongside the path here as well. Just show you that in a second. Yes, in that uh, wood behind me, there used to be a quarry. Um, and obviously, that would have been local Cotswold stone to build the neighbouring villages hereabouts around uh, Bybury, etc. And um, you can't actually access it as far as I'm aware because there is a public right of way the other side of the woodland, and I'm on this public footpath here. Um, so, if you are doing walks, be mindful of that. You can't just suddenly wander off into woodland unless it's, you know, National Trust or Woodland Trust or it has got a marked public right of way across it on an OS map which is normally indicated by either a green light green dotted line or a longer dash dotted line and or indeed a marked as a, a bridle way so those are then rights away but uh, there are also open access so a lot of the national parks you can effectively walk where you like and those are marked on the OS maps it's like a a brown color where they're, they're kind of edged out in brown and then there's like a lighter tan color to mark the area where there is complete open access and there's I can't remember how many hectares of uh, open access land there is in uh, England but um, they're obviously worth seeking out because then you can you have a free to roam obviously in the area that I cover uh, the most obvious examples of that are Dartmoor and uh, Exmoor of course and there are others dotted around the tops of the Cotswolds we came across it when we were going across uh, Cleve Hill as well. Everything's Conegar around here that's C-O-N-E-Y-G-A-R very substantial farmhouse called Conegar Farm behind me just in that way over there just the end of this track there are some cottages called Conegar and over in that direction is Conegar Wood. Now I'm not sure what the direct the um, derivative of the name Conigar is but I'm intrigued by that it's not something I've come across on the Cotswolds before if anybody knows uh, please let me know there is the only thing I know is that there is a location in fact a small little it's not really a hill more of a hummock at the base of a Robinswood Hill in Gloucester called Coney Hill in fact there used to be a hospital there 
Um, that's that's the only thing I know in this area of that. Uh, but if anybody else uh, has can shed anything like that, we'd love to hear from you. Drop a comment below. Um, there are various tracks you can go now to buy Bria. You can just kind of go off to the left, but we're going to head on to um, the little hamlet of Arlington, which of course is where the mill is in Bybury, if you're familiar with Bybury at all. Because uh, I think that part, the upper part from there, is going to be quieter than the, the centre of the, the village, because I am dreading when I get into Bybury. Um, maybe I can, can grab a, a cold drink. I'm not sure. I've got uh, water and uh, fruit snacks with me to keep me going if I need it, but I'm okay. Then I had some lunch before I left. Um, but I just, yeah, obviously just keeping water levels up. That is so important if you are out walking, particularly on a very sunny day today. So I've got uh, sun cream on my hands and back of my neck and that because uh, aforementioned skin cancer, which I won't detail you with now, but uh, I always check the high, U this high UV and it is today. The other good thing about um, this part of the high walls here is the fact it's very dry underfoot. Certainly haven't come in <laughs> into the muddy slippery conditions which we've experienced on the other three Cotswold walks thus far and um, hoping now that'll be like that on the other the rest of the walks that I do until we get into uh, the winter months again. Certainly get the sense you're high up here. I'm not sure of the exact um, height, um, the highest points on the Cotswolds, I think. Um, I'll drop the meters in below and have a look at the contours when I do the editing and fit that in now. We are following the contours down now because obviously Bybury's in a dip. Well, it needs to be because it's on the River Colne and we, as I say, we've been climbing since we left Colne St Albans. And it's at this point shortly we'll be crossing over Aikman Street, the Roman Road. I, I couldn't remember where Aikman Street went from and where it to and I've just managed to get a bit of 4G signal just to look it up on my phone and I, I kind of forgot this obviously I've probably learned this at school but I've forgotten uh, yeah first of all it's 73 miles long and it runs from the counties of Hertfordshire um, which is obviously north of London to Gloucestershire and the towns it went from were current day St Albans which then was known as Verlanium I think I've got the pronunciation of that right um, and obviously that that would be a nice place for me to visit but obviously it's outside my area I believe lots of other youtubers have done it I think uh, Stephen and Yana have done St Albans uh, looks like a really beautiful interesting place and um, it goes to what was Corinium Sirencester and uh, in Sirencester, in fact, there is a fantastic museum, the Corinian Museum. So if you're ever in or near Sirencester or visiting this part of the world, I can highly recommend a visit to the uh, Corinian Museum. I'm sure that St Alban has an equally interesting uh, Roman museum as well, I would imagine, because obviously that was also an important Roman town there. Uh, but yeah, I think it's just along here, this pond is marked on the OS map. It's difficult to make count the way of the path at this point because the field has been recently ploughed and sowed. Uh, yeah, it's not that exciting. It's a bit uh, <laughs> full of uh, duckweed in there. But uh, yeah, so we're just going to carry along this way. So it is actually quite difficult to make out where Aikman Street crossed this. So it kind of goes off a, a skew, a diagonal angle across my footpath down towards Bybury. And I think I'm at the exact spot now, but it is difficult to work out. It's the track that looks like it just goes off. I don't know if you can see that there, just along there, but it's not very clearly defined. It's even less defined on this side <laughs> because it goes off a bank. And obviously that probably wasn't there. There was probably uh, maybe a, a cutting. And obviously you know the, the Romans for their brilliant road engineering. As to testament now, if you ever travel along the Foss Way, how straight it is. I thought it was uh, along this bit here, but uh, according to the IS map, went straight along there so that would have been the direction of St Albans and that way it's the direction of Sirencester.
I see the deer there have just uh, run off. Um, I think they look like red deer, they didn't look like fallow or roe deer. I'll try and zoom in on that when I do the editing, see if I can see that. There is a small wood here, just to my left, your right coming up, and that's probably where they're heading for. It looks quite thick woodland, which is obviously what they like. This part of the walk is absolutely delightful. All the walkers that I saw walking in and around Conce and Aldwins earlier on seem to have gone. They're obviously following just the river, the river bottom, which is obviously is like the, the glory bit, if you like, the, the shots that all the Instagrammers do. But I say I much prefer the quieter section, and I was hoping there would be quieter sections on this walk today, and indeed, I've been lucky with that, apart from the plane over my head. So we're about half a mile away from Bybury now, and uh, as we start to dip down towards Arlington, the little hamlet of Arlington, and the mill there, we will of course then see the River Colne again, and probably shortly followed by loads of tourists. So I'm just enjoying this section here, this peace and quiet on this top bit here, doing a, a bit, uh, also filming me walking, doing the vlogging as well, so you can see what goes on when I'm vlogging, um, using the other camera on the tripod. And uh, yeah, it's it's wonderful, a beautiful day, beautiful deer. I can't hear those deer, they're in that, it's, it looks like it's uh, perhaps a cedar spruce, not cedar spruce, woodland just there. Hi! <laughs> Don't know who that is over there. <laughs> but uh, catch you all in a bit on the descent towards Bybury. So I'm just on the footpath bypassing Bybury now, so I've kind of reached halfway round from Constant Alban to Bybury. I'm not going in the village itself. It sounds extremely noisy in there, lots of traffic, cars and people. I could do without that today, to be honest with you. So I'd say I'll drop in a couple of links. If you do want to see videos about Bybury itself, I will drop that in. But uh, we will be meeting back up with the River Colne shortly. So through the trees there, I should be able to make out Bybris Church. There is also a manor house down there, which is currently used as a hotel, I believe. And you have this delightful wood here as well, which separates the countryside where I am from all the madness down there in the village with the motorbikes and cars whizzing through and horns blaring, people shouting. Um, as I say, my mental health isn't up to that at the moment, so I do apologise for that and I will uh, drop some links in if you want to see the uh, village of Bybury. Anyway, we're going to continue along this way. We'll probably get to see Bybury Mill though, Arlington Mill, which is the one that's open. But there's one right on the banks of the river and hopefully we'll be able to see that. Just the other side of that gate over there. So we have River Colne in the valley behind me. Absolutely beautiful. Bybury is just the, in the wood in front of me. And I'd, again, I do apologize for not being able to do that today. I'm, my mental health is just an up to it. I can't bear being around people or just noise. It's, it sounds like motorbikes screaming through heavy traffic. Lots of people, looks like cars double parked from what I could see. So it looks like absolute mayhem there because it's obviously, it's a sunny Saturday and probably the best weather we've had for quite some time this, this year. So people are, don't blame them for getting out and about, but it's just, just too busy for me to handle. So I'm going to make my way around the path, which is just this way. It will drop down gradually to the River Colne, and then we're going to follow the river all the way back to Colne St Albans. Other than that, I've been really enjoying this walk. Coming up over the high Cotswolds uh, to this point has been fantastic. It's been very, very quiet. It's been really good views. We had those beach woods as well which makes it absolutely fantastic so uh, yeah just had a bit of a sip of water and an apple here and i'm going to now continue my journey see you in a bit now the paths split we're actually going to be taking the bridle way which is just down there down that track behind me there before i head back that way and follow the river Colne, i'm just going to go this way in front of me which is down there 
because there is a mill and there's also a bridge over the River Colm which looks really interesting from the map so we're going to have a look together. Let's go. I can't tell you, this place is an absolute delight. I've got uh, a weir there on the River Colm. I've got the Colm going underneath my feet. I'm just sat on the, the top of this bridge here, stone bridge. I thought it was just a little wooden bridge. I didn't realise it was an actual track. And behind me, we have these wonderful old mill buildings and most of them don't look like they have been restored at all. Um, they look like they were, in, I've just gone back in time to what, the 17th century. I'll just do some monochrome photographs of those as well. Now, just as I press the red button, another heavy plane from RAF Fairford goes overhead. Oh well, <laughs> massive, great big thing. Um, yeah, that bit was delightful there. I love that mill because it's because it's unrestored. It has a real authentic feel to it. Of course, you can go to Arlington Mill and pay to, to go around that with all the tourists and the the ice creams and the whatnot and the, the noise. But that was just wonderful. I don't think there was anyone else there. Um, it was great. Loved that. I hope you enjoyed the uh, black and white photographs that I took there. I just, uh, well, that was a, an excellent little spot. So we're on the uh, level track now. Got the uh, River Colm to my left, your right, and uh, we'll be joining up closer with that again shortly. So it just goes on a little peninsula there. The other thing to note is on the OS map at that point, it does say that there is a Roman building just behind the mill. Now, the mill is private property. They got CCTV and probably posh people live there, that kind of thing. So I wasn't going to trespass and trying to find out what the Roman building is. I'll have a look to see if there's anything on the line to say what that is. But um, yeah, so obviously there is a lot of Roman activity here. And I say we're only a few miles from Chedworth Roman Villa, which is a fantastic uh, National Trust place where there's a brilliant uh, mosaic there. And that's certainly something we will be visit visiting on uh, West Country mornings at some future point. So here we are back at the River Colne. I'm walking my way back to Colne St Alwyn's now, back on the level. Colne St Alwyn's is just a little bit further round the nook of that uh, bend in the river here. 
delightful river as you can see really really enjoying the the water there i hope you have too there's fish just splashed up there i wonder if it's a trout from uh, the bybury trout farm who knows <laughs> but uh yeah i hope you enjoyed the uh the video today i'll probably close with some more photographs of uh, that i took around uh carlton Albans earlier on and uh, probably do a couple of bits on the way back as well but uh until next time on West Country Wanderings, look after yourselves, stay safe, stay well, take care of each other, and I hope to see you on West Country Wanderings again very soon. All the best for now. Cheers. Goodbye.